Definitely quite like this bottle coming in at 62 ringgit. This gives you the best value. It's so smooth. Volume, okay. Pretty much what a standard shampoo. This week, we're going to be talking about the top three Japanese shampoo from Watson's. It and the Talasso Shampoo. Let's see, where is it coming in? There you go. It comes in a very nifty cylindrical bottle. I quite like this bottle. It's got a tinge of grey. Um, the It and the Talasso Shampoo. It's a bit weird because they start with the number 8. It and the Talasso Shampoo. It's 475 mils coming in for 75 ringgit and 90 cents only. So you get pretty good value for a very high volume of shampoo. It's considered as a daily use shampoo. The unique thing that they market about this product is that they have their own patented Talasso stem cell system. Main function of it is to actually repair damaged cuticles and to give your hair a much luscious shine. Um, one of the things that they do advocate for use is for normal to oily hair and also to help fix frizz or dry and damaged hair. The consistency comes out as a clear liquid. Texture is quite runny if I were to say so. And in terms of the smell, it's a very generic shampoo smell. Nothing too strong, not too pungent, so it doesn't hit the nose and causes any, any pain when you're doing your shampoo. It has a bit of a fresh scent to it. Overall, I would say it rates for myself pretty much smells like a standard salon type of shampoo without it being too pungent. Main function, cleanse and hydrate, pretty much what a standard shampoo does. And it also uses marine complex, so it's got many different types of stem cell sources from marine cells and also apple cells, all combined to give your skin up a much healthier, clean base. Um, the way that you use it is very standard, same as any other shampoo, wet your hair, mix it, work it into a nice rich lather before you rinse off. I reckon like most shampoo, after you use it, you still need to go on with your conditioner and we'll probably do a conditioner review on the next segment. Um, in the meantime, I would say, this rates fairly okay, quite standard for a 475 mil, 75 ringgit and 90 cents. I would say you get pretty good value for the 8 and the Talasso shampoo. Coming in second, N Honey Melty Moist. I'm telling you, Japanese have got some really weird names. That starts with an 8. This starts with an N, an ampersand, like, you know, figure. N. Now, this N Honey Melty Moist is 440 mils, coming in at 62 ringgit and 90 cents. Much cheaper value compared to 8 and the Tarso. Um, it's 100% organic Moroccan oil base that they use for this shampoo, and it uses three different types of honey. 60% of it comes from Manuka honey, which is from, the, from New Zealand, 20% from um, Bulgaria, which is the rose honey, and a subsequent 20% raw honey from Japan. Fully made, imported from Japan. Um, again, it's a daily use shampoo, suitable for damaged hairs, frizzy hairs, that you want to give yourself a nice uh, wave and shine. Its marketing gimmick is to tell you that you it's so smooth after you wash, you can actually run your fingers through, feeling that silky soft texture. In fact, I think this sells really well if, you're, if you manage to find it in Watson's, otherwise it's one of the top sellers, it usually goes off the shelf really fast. Let's do a quick test on its texture, this comes out the, the previous one was a clear gel. This is more of a pinkish liquid. They smell almost identical. I'm surprised. It actually smells the same. They are about 60 to 70% similar in terms of texture and also in terms of the smell. So, well, I would say if you go by color gender, that's probably male color, female color, or perhaps you can, you know, cross gender it, doesn't matter. Um, let's see. Both are sulfate-free, which is great news. However, this has some parabens, and the main function of parabens in this, uh, for this shampoo is as a preservative for your shampoo, so it has a longer shelf life. However, it won't rate very high on me because we usually do advocate non-sulfate, non-paraben shampoo. This fails a little bit because of the paraben content. But it's okay. Let's move on to shampoo number three. Moist Diane Von Hill Orange Flower Shampoo. It's a real mouthful. Let's get it in to the frame right now. Nice nifty yellow bottle. 
I quite like the pink bottle. It, it, it kind of you know, allows us to recycle it as a very nice pen holder later. This comes in with nice greetiness all around. It feels very much like a perfume bottle, even looks like a perfume bottle. However, it's fully shampoo. 500 ml, this gives you the most number of volume at the price of 49 ringgit and 40 cents. So this gives you the best value in terms of all the Japanese shampoo that's available in Watson's. What is the selling point? It is for dry and freezy hair. It's sulfate free, paraben free, silicon free, additive free. It's trying to go as natural as possible. 100% plant based with argan oil and also olive oil. And this comes out as a clear gel. So it's a clear gel. Texture is pretty similar. One thing I have to say, they are very consistent in terms of their end product. They are all clear gel based. They don't use a uh, cream base. It's still gel based for all these Japanese shampoo. A light floral scent. Kind of reminds me um, perfume beads that you used to get for putting into, into, into your pencil cases and all, right? Reminds me of that. It's used a lot for to, to give you smoother, shinier hairs. In fact, that's the selling point for all three. So I would say in terms of the value, you get pretty good value. They're quite similar in all three. Uh, we will next do a foam test to see which one foams the best. A lot of you really want to find out. Again, all three, the great news about all three, they are totally sulfate free. So if you're going to Watson's and you want to pick a shampoo without thinking too much, if there's any sulfates, just head over to the Japanese section. You got yourself some pretty good bet that they are sulfate free. However, only one of them has paraben. Hey guys, if you like the content of what I'm presenting here on the YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Also, like the content so that you'll be informed the next time when I come up with a new review from a different center, different products, especially just for you. And please, if you've used any of the products, I would love to hear your comments. Which one have you used? Or if you've got a certain product you'd like me to review, please key it down there and we'll get back to you with fresh content. All right, thanks guys. Starting up with it and the Talasso. Let's give it a quick squeeze and let's... This comes on, despite not having any sulfates, it has a very rich lather and that's only on the hand. I reckon once you put it into, into your hair, you will get fair amount of lather. So pretty interesting for something that does not have any sulfates, you still get a very decent amount of lather which translates to foam for you. Coming next that we're going to check is N Honey Melty Moist Shampoo. Well, of course, you'll probably say it's better to put on the hair, but I'm not going to be shampooing my hair three times in one video. End up the video with hair loss. This has got double the amount of foam as compared to it and the Talasso. It's just spilling everywhere now. So yeah, I could see why the appeal of it is high and how it's probably a top seller in terms of the Japanese shampoo available in Watson's. As mentioned earlier in the video, it usually gets run off the shelf pretty fast. Um, and again, I think it's mainly because of the amount of foam that it generates. Um, a lot of us still like the idea of having foam, thinking that foam is itself a clean, cleansing agent. My professional opinion is that it's just foam. It's, not, it's got nothing to do with cleanliness. But moving on, number three, we've got Moist Dine Born Here Orange Flower Shampoo. Even just through the name, I don't think this sells very well. The name is just too long. Yep. Also generates just as much foam. Well, not as much as N Honey. This is right second on the list, so I would say top of the top of the amount of foam would be N Honey, followed by the Moist Diane Bon Hill, then only it and the Talasso in terms of high foam, mid, lower foam. All right, but even the lower foam is still a lot more compared to the other shampoos we reviewed from um, uh, Sephora, which had much more higher um, organic ingredients. So there you have it. You've got a review of the shampoo, its usage, and also the amount of foam generated by all three. So I do hope you find this um, review helpful. It's got all three different types of Japanese shampoo. Again, this week I'm reviewing top three Japanese shampoo available in Watson's. Great news about all three is that all three have got no sulfates. So you can go in, don't use your brain, pick one up, and you're quite safe 
In terms of foam, I would say all three generate some pretty decent amount of foam, which serves the, the, the function that a lot of us want. Only one has got parabens, whereas the other two does not. They are categorized as a daily use shampoo. However, they do not state in their literature or in their instructions to use it daily. So you see, they're quite smart. They just tell you to use as and when you want to. So I would say, although I broadly categorize this as a daily use shampoo, I still advise you to use it maybe an alternate day. But if you've got no hair issue, go ahead, use it on a daily basis. All right. So I hope you guys found this useful. Next week, we're going to come up with another segment whereby we're going to talk about Ola Plex, which is available in Sephora. So stay tuned.